Hello, my friends. A very good morning, and may God bless you all. And listen, God's blessings depend on each of us. Which means that the blessing of God upon my life depends on me. So, I use my intelligence, my reason, I rationalize, I, I use the thoughts, my thoughts according to God's thoughts. And then, my soul is pleased and so does my body. Why? Because it's in our spirit that God will speak. And our spirit then will lead our soul, which is the heart. And our soul will then be pleased with God's direction and the body will be grateful. Pay attention. Today, I want to give you a tip. I don't know what the problem that you are going through is. I don't know. Let me just disable the comment section here because this distracts people. But pay attention. What do you need to do in order for you to become the blessing itself? Because to be the blessing itself is God's desire for you. He wants you to be the blessing itself. Jesus said that he who believes in me, as the scriptures say, then from within him will flow rivers of living water, which means that we would be like a fountain. A fountain is always giving. It, it just gives. A fountain doesn't receive anything. It doesn't matter if it's in the rain, in the storm, in an earthquake, if it's in a beautiful sunny day, if it's hot or cold. It doesn't matter the temperature. It doesn't matter the environment. It doesn't matter the circumstances. A fountain is a fountain. A fountain is always springing up, always flowing, always giving, giving, giving. And that's what Jesus wants us to become. He wants us to become this blessing, this fountain. He wants you to be the fountain itself. Instead of being begging, asking, waiting, asking for favors from others, you have to give. Because it's by giving that you receive. The more we give, the more we receive. The more we give, the more we will receive. Pay attention to this tip for you to become the blessing itself. We spoke a few days ago how we have to give thanks to God in everything, isn't it? Very well. Giving thanks to God in everything is also a prayer. Did you know that? When you say thank God, then you are praising God. You are worshiping Him despite of the hardships and opposite situations you face. And then you say thank God and the devil we will not receive any praise. When the person laments and complains and they murmur, then they praise the devil. But when they say, thank God, thank God, then they praise God despite of those situations. Afterwards, you can read there in First Peter chapter 2 that you will see what he says concerning this, what the Holy Spirit speaks through him. But let's go back to, to you being the blessing itself. Did you know, and if you didn't know, you will know now, that prayers bring us closer to God. Did you know that? Those who pray get close to God. Look at that. 
It's going to break through. You are going to break through. Those who pray get closer to God. Is it true, Bishop? Yes, it is. Is it written, Bishop? Yes, it is written. It is written. You see. Let me show you where it's written. Pay attention. Here, the holy text says like this. But without, without faith, it is impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God without faith. For he, he who comes to God must believe, so they have the obligation it's a must, it's a requirement that he who comes to God must believe that he is. <laughs> Which means that when you come near to God through prayer, Prayer brings a person closer to God. So we know that whoever prays, when a person prays, they know that God exists because they are not talking to, to nothing, to the air, to stick and stones. No, they are talking to God, who is the Spirit. So it says here, for he who comes to God must. They have the obligation. Whoever comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So those who pray talk to God. Well, those who talk to God pray. They get closer to him because they believe he exists. Yes or no? You wouldn't pray if you didn't believe in God. And he is, he is the secret of those who pray. Those who pray and the Holy Spirit speaks through the Apostle Paul that we should pray without ceasing. So if I pray without ceasing, then I will be always in the presence of God. Every time I pray, I enter God's presence. For example, I believe that the Holy Spirit is in me. Jesus in spirit is in me. He's always with me, 24 hours a day. He doesn't take a holiday from me, not at all. He's always with me. Yet, when I pray, then I communicate with him. One thing is for him to be me. Another thing is for me to communicate with him, to have communion with him, to have intimacy with him. And this is only possible when I pray. For example, God is with me. So I'm watching, let's say, a soap opera, Kings, right? This TV series, Kings, I'm there watching it. So, God is with me. My thoughts are on the story of the TV series, of what happened in the past. So, God is with me. But I am not necessarily in communion with him because I'm thinking of what I'm watching, the TV series. Agora. However, when I leave and I go to a place or I elevate my thoughts to God, when, for example, there on the screen of the TV, a, a verse, a Bible verse shows up that mentions, for example, a psalm of David in his affliction, in his anguish, then I... In that moment, I read and I elevate my thoughts to God and I feel joy in my soul. But then when it goes to another scene and the scene has nothing to do with you being in the presence of God, 
It's just they're showing it's a problem that they experienced back then. Then in that moment, I am seeing, thinking, rationalizing concerning what I'm watching and, and feeling that that is going through in, in the story. But when I pray, when I read the Bible, when I pray, or when I elevate my thoughts to God, then I am in communion with Him. I enter His presence. Did you understand? Did you understand? If you didn't understand, later on you watch this message again. So, until you fully understand what I mean, so that you can take advantage Take advantage of what God graciously offers to every human being. The privilege to enter in His presence. It's very nice. This is not religion. This is not philosophy. This is communion with God. When you think of God, then you enter His presence. But when you pray, you pray to God, the Almighty, the Almighty God, the Most High God, that has nothing above Him, only under, because He is the Almighty, the Most High. So when you pray, then you speak. Speak to him. He hears your voice. But I don't deserve. It doesn't matter whether or not you deserve it. It doesn't matter if you are a sinner or not, or if you are a saint. It doesn't matter at all. What matters is the faith. You manifest your faith. You, you manifested your faith in His Word. You placed what is written in practice. Then you are in His presence. It's what is written here. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe. It's a must. It's, it's an obligation. The person must believe. He who comes to God, they must believe. Those who come to Him, they must believe that He is. So when you pray, you elevate your thoughts to God. And therefore, you get closer to Him. You believe that He is and you enter His presence. This is a fact. It's a reality. And He says... It's written here. Believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Those who pray, those who think of Him, those who want to know His will for their life. So, this is communion. You give of yourself. You elevate your thoughts. Not emotions, not feelings. No, you elevate your mind, your reasoning, your, your rational being, your intelligence, your intellect. You elevate your spirit to the presence of the Spirit of God. So, that is communion there. There is an exchange there is surrender when you worship, you are doing that. When you praise God, you are doing that. When you say, thank God, simple, but you are entering His presence. When you think of God, you are entering His presence. So, the blessing that you want to become depends on this communion, your communication, permanent communication with Him, a permanent communication with Him. Did you understand? So, what is your problem? It's not just to come before God and say, Oh my God, as if you are going to a supermarket, I want this, I want that, I want the other. No, don't do that. Of course, you can ask, you enter His presence and you ask what you need, what it's needed in that moment, what you need. 
Não aquilo Not que você what quer. You want. Aquilo que vem what esfregar o seu will ego. Caress your ego aquilo que somehow. É Not what will, let's say, make you vain, Não. fulfill your Mas vain desires. No, you are going to ask what you need. Segundo. And is according to his will. It's fair, it's righteous. So you present it to God and he gives it to you. You don't need Bishop Macedo to enter God's presence. What you need is your faith in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the right, the privilege to go before the throne of the Most High without a middle man, without a middle person. It's you and him, you and him. And he wants that. He wants your constant presence before his throne. However, those who are lazy, the indolent ones, those people who like to depend on others, I always ask him, oh, bishop, pray for me, bishop, pray for this, pray for that, pray for the other. And I pray. You don't even have to ask. I pray for all of you already. I pray for all those that this life reaches out to, all those that I reach on social media. I pray. I pray whether I pray here live with you or secretly, but I pray. Every day I pray. Every single day. Because in this prayer that I say on your behalf, I'm also saying this prayer for our loved ones. We want everyone to be saved. It's what Jesus said, give. And that's what we are trying to do here, to give to everyone what God has given us. However, my dear friend, and I'm speaking like this so that you are not a religious person. You become a religious person. You, you understand? Uh, old fashioned, squared person. Uh, with everything perfectly right. No. You have the right, the privilege to enter before God's presence whenever you want and wherever you want. In the moment that you determine, in the moment that you want, He will be available for you. But if you are that person who is indolent, lazy, then you prefer to get your package of problems and throw on somebody else's shoulders. It doesn't work this way, my friend. If you believe in God, then you enter his presence and you ask what you need so that you won't be depending on A, B, or C. Speak to God. You suffered an injustice, talk to him. You are going through a difficult situation, talk to him. The Bible says that we have to present to God all of our needs, all of our needs, needs, not those things that we just want, but what we need. So, it's a different thing. That's what you have to understand as well. One thing is for you to ask what you need. Oh, God, I need good health. You have the right to have good health. So, ask it for God, from God. Another thing is, is for you to ask God, Oh, Lord, I want to be rich. And I want to have a lot of money because I want to buy clothes, I want to travel the world, I want this, I want that. Do you know why God does not give us everything we want? It's because we want things that later on will harm us. In the case of Solomon, you are going to see in, in the series later on that Solomon... As, as long as he was simple, as long as he was God-fearing, he would do everything according to God's will. But when he mingled with all those women, he had a whole lot of problems. He brought problems on himself. So, 
And he ended up being seduced by one of them to become an idolater. He became an idolater. Solomon became an idolater. So God gives us what we need because he's a father. I don't have the courage to go to a child and give them a child, for example, at the age of 10 years old. Imagine this child, 10 years old, and you give them a million dollars. Here it is. Give, give that package of money in their hands. What do you think they will do? Tell me. They, they won't know. They will think. You know, they will go and get everything their heart wants. They will desire everything that their eyes see. And that's where they will think. They will go there in a shop and buy all the chocolates available and we want to eat chocolate day and night, night and day, without ceasing, and you have a stomachache, digestion. You, you know what I mean. So think, my friend, God is a father. He gives us what we need. He gives us what we need. And according to our capacity to handle Remember the servants, the three servants, that Jesus speaks of the parable of the three servants. One servant received five talents according to his capacity to handle it. The other servant received two talents according to his capacity to handle it. And the third one received one talent according to his capacity. So, God gives us according to our capacity to receive, to handle. And as he knows the future, then he won't give us much to those who have the ability to only handle a little bit. He will give much to those who have the ability to handle much. Knowing that to whoever much is given, much will be required, demanded as well. Therefore, my friend, don't you think that God is like Santa Claus? One thing has nothing to do with the other. God is a father. He is the father of all those who have in his son, the Lord Jesus, the only Lord and Savior. Those who place themselves according to his will. So, if you want to become the blessing itself, my friend, start by praying right now. Always. You don't need me. You don't need anybody. You can be ugly, beautiful, fat, skinny. You can be whoever. Pray. Talk to God. If you are a sinner or not, it doesn't matter. If you manifest your faith, if you show your faith, then God is faithful to forgive you, to justify you. He is faithful to give you what you need. But you have to enter his presence. If you want the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, well, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Today, in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God, we are going to have, as usual, meetings for those who are thirsty for the Holy Spirit, those who are thirsty. And I cannot be thirsty for you, and neither can you be thirsty for me. I can teach the Word of God, but I cannot thirst for you. Everybody has their own thirst. Everyone has their own needs. So I'm teaching, and you know, teaching what the Holy Spirit has given me, and I'm passing it on to you. Now, if you don't want to obey and you want to be dependent on Bishop Marcelo in order to pray, I can even pray as I usually do. For example, right now, you have a bellyache, I don't know, you have there a problem, a difficult situation, you are facing a hopeless situation, you, you are in a hopeless situation. Do you believe, do you have faith? that right now, 
this situation can be transformed right now, in this moment, whether disease, infirmities, then in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be healed, be delivered. I unite my faith. I agree with you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you may be delivered and free from this curse that is there, this evil that is there in your life. Do you believe? Then it's done. Amen? Amen. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.